breakfast, microdosing psychedelic drugs in a world first randomised controlled trial in New Zealand has officially been given the green light. Breakfast can reveal that just last week the Ministry of Health approved the University of Auckland's application which will allow it to import, supply and give trial participants LSD. The University hopes to start the trial next year. Joining me now from Sydney via Skype is um, Mac uh, Macquarie University Research Fellow Vince Polito who has carried out microdosing research in Australia. Good morning, Vince. Good morning, thank you. Good morning, really happy to talk to you today. Oh, we're so happy to talk to you too. Can you just give us a, sort of a background on microdosing? What is it and, and what do people use it for? Sure thing. So I guess to explain microdosing, it's worth stepping back for a moment and just about what we know scientifically about psychedelics in general. So psychedelics have sort of a association as a mind bedding set of substances that may be associated with counterculture in the 1960s that might make you see or hear things that aren't there. Um, but apart from that kind of popular association, what people may not know is that before these substances were prohibited in the 1960s, there was actually a great deal of research into their potential as uh, psychological tools that could be used as treatments for a whole range of things. So they were used, they were being investigated as treatments for mental illness, as substances that could help with stopping addictions of different kinds, and also as uh, adjuncts to psychotherapy. There was really quite uh, impressive research about the potential of these tools to help people deal with different psychological problems. Now, all of that stopped in the uh, early 70s when these substances were prohibited, and there certainly are some dangers of, associated with these substances as, as well. Um, but all of that research stopped at, at the time of prohibition, and, and not much has happened until the last 10 or 15 years where scientists have once again started to become very interested in uh, what what psychedelics might tell us about the way that the mind works and also about their clinical potential. Now you've done now, your I'm own research. Uh, sorry, you've done your own research using mushrooms, or, or um, I think there's an official word for it, psilocybin, or something like that. What have you found? How can it enhance a mood or um, help attention? Right. So the idea of microdosing, that is taking really small doses of these different substances, has become really popular in the last four or five years. And so we conducted some research on this. We were really trying to work out if there was anything to the claims of microdoses. People who, who take microdoses often claim that it can help with quite a, a range of different things. And we were trying to work out if there is anything to those sorts of claims or if it might just all be because they've read, you know, maybe positive stories about what it might do or something like that. So in our research, we got about 60 people who had been microdosing regularly and we measured them on quite a range of different psychological measures to see if there was any effect if they microdosed for about six weeks. And we, found, we had some interesting findings. We found that people's levels of depression and stress uh, dropped following six weeks of microdosing. There was also some changes in people's attentional capacities. So people were less likely to have their mind wander to unwanted thoughts, and they were more likely to become, uh, to sort of be able to use their attention in a way to become a, a very imaginative, imaginatively involved with things. So people were reporting experiences, for example, of uh, feeling like strong connection to nature or with art or with those kinds of intense uh, imaginative experiences. You also measured mystical experiences. Can you tell us uh, about that measure? Yeah, absolutely. So we had a measure of mystical experience, which sounds a little bit odd, but it comes from the psychology of religion. There are people who have sort of plotted out what are the key markers of a, a, a mystical kind of state or, or a mystical experience across all sorts of different religions, and then, then develop some measures to see the degree to which someone has had those kinds of experiences. And we included that in our study. And the reason that we included it was because there are there, there is some research showing that with high dose psilocybin, that's magic mushrooms or LSD, that people can sometimes have these really extreme peak positive experiences that take on some of the qualities of a mystical state. Um, and although there is pretty good research showing that that can happen with high dose psychedelics, 
We didn't find that at all with microdosing. We, we had that, that was completely a baseline in our study. And it's not surprising really, because with microdosing, people are taking such small doses that we wouldn't really expect them to have these grand, big, you know, sudden life-changing experiences. So we can expect with this trial that's happening here in New Zealand that people aren't going to be walking around the country tripping out, obviously, of their mind. But how long can you microdose for? This is not something that you do long-term, is it? Is it a short period that you're meant to be microdosing for? Well, it's a, it's a really good question how long people can do it for, and, and it's not something that we have great answers to yet. I mean, this is something that has sort of taken off, uh, I guess, in the psychedelic underground uh, in the last few years, as I said, and people do it in all sorts of different ways. So in our study, we had some people who had been microdosing relatively regularly for up to about a, a year or more. Um, but most people seem to maybe microdose for a month or two months and then stop and maybe go back to the practice. So it's something that people do for not insignificant amounts of time, but I don't think there's many people that are doing it, you know, chronically for, for multiple years. It's, it's really early days in exploring this, though, and we, we don't know what people people are doing and we we also don't really know yet um what if any kind of schedule makes sense wow it is fascinating stuff thank you so much for joining us this morning research fellow vince polito uh live out of sydney we we should also say that Vince got up super early to do that. Super which early? Was, yeah, 5.40, so we really appreciate that. That's when he was on the telly, not when yeah. he got up. So thanks, Vince. Totally. I read an amazing book uh, called How to Change Your Mind, The New Science of Psychedelics by Michael Pollan. I've lent it to a friend and not got it back. <laughs> what happened? Yeah, He's but it's tripping so, out. so, so good. And it's the history of LSD. Yeah. H how it turned up on the scene and then how it was... Because Vince was saying that they were doing trials and then they... Um, Obviously, there was, a, I can't remember this guy's name, but he sort of took it a bit too far, right? He got in a, a van and he, he got all of his... Timothy Leary? Yeah, I Tim think it was. Yeah. And, and everyone was taking high doses and they were driving around the Saints. Well, that was the whole hunt at uh, S. Thompson Fear and Loathing. Yeah, wasn't? and it was the 70s and they yeah. were they were really having mystical experiences, let's say. And so, obviously, gave it a bad name. That's not what microdosing is about. It's like taking very, very small doses. It's like a medicine in the morning. It's really interesting. Interesting yeah. stuff. Yeah. What it could do for mood disorders, all wow. sorts of mood disorders. Yeah. You're fascinated to see the results of the study, aren't you? Totally. Yeah, yeah.